I'm going to be discussing the final scene of Agnes Varda's final film, Faces Places, which she directed with JR. The scene that I select is the final scene of the film. And it starts with her eyes and toes on a train and the train the shot is stable, the train is moving across the screen from left to right. And I believe in a voiceover, we hear JR say, this train will go to places you've never been. And that, by that he means the train in which she's put the toes and the eyes. And at that moment, leading to the final sequence, JR and the film are saying that that is one of the great powers of cinema, like trains. Cinema takes people to places that they've never been. and They've known throughout the making of this film that Agnes is old, that she will die soon. They talk about it. Avant qu'il soit trop tard pour moi, c'est ça? C'est pas ce que je voulais dire, mais tu me comprends. Tu l'as dit. And so they are also suggesting at this moment, and I'm saying they because J.R. and Agnes wrote the screenplay. So remember, the cinéma écriture is the writing of the screenplay. They have written these words: "This train will go places we've never been," and that is to say, it will go into the future. Cinema allows people who die to go into the future and to live and to be, in that respect, known and honored and understood in time. So there's always been a connection in the eyes of theorists of cinema. I'm not talking about myself, I'm talking about people like Godard or, or Agnes Varda or J.R. that trains and films are very similar because they are modern machines that allow people to go to places and times that they couldn't without them. But cinema is even better about time than trains. So we understand that something big is going to happen because he says something very beautiful. And then there's a long shot of J.R. photographing that. So, or with his still camera. So we get in that shot, the connection between trains and cinema that I've been talking about. And then Agnes says, thank you for a beautiful trip. So she's saying there that they've been on a trip together. We cut to these very beautiful close-ups of the two of them sleeping. And they're each on the left and the right side of the frame. And then a shot reverse to Agnes sleeping. And then they give you the establishing shot, which is the two of them, him on the left side, her on the right side. And this parallel dualism or friendship is rendered visually. Now, this is the first thing I need to say about the film being both scripted and performed and unscripted and extemporaneous. When average viewers watch documentary, or what they think is a documentary, they think of it as being real. That what the camera's job is, is to shoot what's in front of it and show it to you, and then tell a story about the world from these caught fragments of the truth. Now, we have to understand that someone has set up the camera to catch him sleeping in a perfect shot and her sleeping in a perfect shot. And my guess is they weren't sleeping, or they're performing sleeping, or, they had, people were shooting them along the train ride, and at some point, whoever is behind the camera realizes that they're both asleep and takes a beautiful close-up of him and a beautiful close-up of her. Any of those could be true, we won't ever know, but it is part of her filmmaking style as someone who mixes documentary and scripting that that's, an, that's actually something we don't know. We don't know when it's real life caught unaware and when it's something that they've written to happen, but that's real, or that they've taken images that they've shot along the trip and scripted later to make those into a very beautiful, highly structured piece of filmmaking. So then they wake up, there's an iPad, and she like sort of tips the iPad up and there's this very cute interchange with him where he says, you know, like, how do I get it? And she goes, oh, it's, you know, four, three, two, one. They're constantly playing that he's the young guy and she's the old lady. And so of course she doesn't understand, you know, technology as well as he is, but that seems to me to be, again, highly played. And then she shows him the sequence again that we've already seen of Godard taking off his glasses in the short little movie that she made. And then JR says, oh my God, 
you're taking me to see Godard. And we realized, oh, this is going to be the end of the movie. They're going to go and find Godard. And the end of the movie is going to be that they get to see something that a worker, a French person, who's the best one that we could, that we all want to see. It's a very exciting moment, but it's very soft because everything they do is very soft. So they watch the clip and it's a classic shot reverse shot interaction between the two of them, even though it's a documentary, it gets closer to her as she gives the big reveal. Again, that's to me pretty closely proves that it's scripted, that they know in advance they're gonna say something like this. And she says that he created cinema, he's an inventor, a researcher, and that cinema needs people like him. She's very generous and that one could say the same for her, but she does not make the claim for herself. And she talks about the fact that she cares for him, even though they haven't been friends for a long time. I think it's a very evocative representation of what is true for a lot of us, that we can still feel love for people that, you know, were friends of ours in the past that we no longer in touch with. Then we're in, we get these establishing shots of the village. They walk into the, the cafe. The camera's already there. <laughs> so, I mean, clearly they've set it up in advance. We're going to have a meeting in the cafe and they walk in and they have this brief introduction that is to whatever is going to happen next, where they're evoking that she's nervous and that he's nervous. This is an exciting moment that we need to anticipate. I'm emphasizing this because my reading of the final scene is that it's entirely scripted and false. That is not how it's been written about and people may disagree with me, but I think that disagreement is fine. It's, there's an uncertainty in the final sequence of the film that is quite different from the certainty that has moved across the film. That is to say at each stop, where they meet people that they don't know, take pictures of them and put them on a wall. It ends with a celebration. Everyone's always happy and it's resolved. This film does not end with a neat resolution. That is why I am arguing it is a film about her death and about death, about all of our deaths. Someone who's still alive, but is very close to her death. So they walk to Godard's house and there's a shot of JR with a little rolly bag and Agnes walking. And then they arrive at a unpresupposing, simple cottage or apartment, it's hard to tell, in a, again, unpresupposing, simple village. And there appears to be a message written on the window. Agnes reads the message and interprets it for JR expresses that it is a message that is simply for her from Godard and she understands what it means and she's very upset by it. The camera moves back and forth between a rather extreme close-up of her and of him and it's very tender because what the message says is that he's not going to show up, he's not going to engage with them and he expresses it with a kind of dig, bringing up memories that are uncomfortable between the two of them in their, from many years ago when they were friends. And she is visibly upset. She, she may even be tearful and he, you know, rubs her shoulder. And then she says, wait, 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 let's, let's go back, they're leaving. I'm gonna write him a note back. And she says, lend me your quill to write a word my friend Jaco. I assume that's what she means for Jean-Luc Godard. Now, here we have an explicit reference to what I began with. A quill, which is a pen, which is a cinema pen, which is cinema stylo, which is the words that French cineasts and French theorists of Nouvelle Vague and French cinema from, uh, from that time on used to, to describe the unique equipment by which great filmmakers write their own style, their own method, their signature. So she says, I'm picking up my quill, Jean-Luc, and I'm going to write a word. You wrote me a word, I'm gonna write back. This is an elegant, but very understated, sentimental, but not 
melodramatic interaction between the greatest French male filmmaker in the history of film and one might say the greatest French female filmmaker in the history of film. And she doesn't do it with swords and she doesn't brutally expose him and she doesn't fight with him, but she's making a very large claim, which is I'm gonna write back with my quote and I'm gonna write a word back to you, Jean-Luc. Jir te connaîtra pas, mais moi je te connais bien. Je t'aime bien. T'as une potien quand même. Bien, on va au bord du lac. <laughs> 